Some of you may know me, most of you probably don't, but I'm Bob, and this is All Things Bob TV. Uh, the reason I'm doing a blog today is to talk to you about a little device that I've been using for recording over the last year or so. For, for those who don't know anything about me, I've been in bands for a long time, um, had a lot of great experiences, been a lot of studios, done a lot of gigs. Um, but in the last year or so I've been trying this out on my own and trying to record from home on my own and it started about a year ago I had writer's block severe writer's block hadn't written a song for probably two years three years maybe nothing of note anyway and um, so I decided to to, to try and break that and uh, I came up with a little tune called unfortunate but true which I wrote on an acoustic guitar um, and basically I used my iPhone um, I found a uh, an app on here which is still quite useful actually for sort of uh, getting down ideas if nothing else it's called NTSR um, and it, there's, it's no great shakes there's, there's four tracks you can adjust the volume playback it's got a, it's got a metronome on it which isn't particularly reliable but it's, it's got a metronome on there it does a job um, what you have to do with this is you have to wear headphones and the first thing I'll point out with this is if you use the iPhones headphones um, bear in mind that the microphone then comes out here and it's hanging on the wire and it's swinging around it touches your face touches your shirt you get an awful lot of noise so the what i did with that is i pair of headphones plug those in just normal headphones no microphone um these are good headphones by the way i'll talk about those another time as well but you get your head, normal headphones plugged in, sit the phone somewhere still and steady so that it doesn't move and let the microphone that's built into the phone pick up the recording instead. So that's the first thing. <clears throat> um, and it was okay, it, got the, it broke the back of this songwriter's block that I had um, and it, it got me going but pretty soon I was frustrated with the quality because the quality is poor at the end of the day. This is re the microphone in this thing is designed for talking into and having conversations into. It's not designed for recording guitars or, or singing even. Um, so the reason I'm here is to tell you about this. Now, this is the Tascam IXZ. Uh, now, iKey Multimedia, uh, I've got a similar device called an iRig, uh, but my, my biggest complaint with that really, and I think it's a, I think it's, fine, it's a good device, but it's, it's you get one for a microphone, or there's one for a guitar, or there's one for MIDI, one for microphone, that kind of thing. They do a different device for each thing. The, the great thing with the Tascam IXZ, or IXE, depending on what part of the world you're from, is this socket here. Oh, can I get that lined up? There you go, can you see it? There you go. So what you've got there is what looks on the surface of it, a XLR socket. But in the middle of that, that bigger hole in the middle there is actually a quarter inch jack. So, i.e. your guitar lead. So you can plug an XL, uh, XLR microphone lead into there so you can use a condenser mic or uh, just a, a normal dynamic mic. Um, but when you're done, you can pop that out and stick in a guitar and record an electric guitar or a bass, um, or possibly a keyboard even. Um, on the front panel there, let me get that into the light, you see there's three switches. One is to switch between guitar, microphone, you've got phantom power, there's a couple of AA, AA batteries inside this, so if you are using a condenser microphone, um, you'll know that it needs to have uh, a little bit of power supplied to it, so phantom power, you switch it over, and that puts a little bit of voltage into the mic for you. And then you've got a control there for the input level, um, so you can adjust that. Then on the back, is a headphone socket. Now what you've got here is a, a little eighth of an inch uh, jack which plugs into your iPhone and then you stick your headphones in there. So you can set up headphones on, plug in your guitar or your microphone, whatever you're going to do, record your track and you can use that MTSR app which is free. Like I said, there's no great shakes, it doesn't do any clever tricks, you can just adjust levels between, but for getting ideas down, it's perfect and it's a really nice little unit. It's nice and solid, I mean it's, it's plastic but it's, it's well built, it's Tascam. I remember using Tascam years ago, um, real to real stuff in, my, in the first studio I ever went into. Um, Tascam know what they're doing um, and it's a good quality bit of kit and that's not to diss the iRig, like I say the iRig is essentially the same idea but it is for a guitar only. Uh, and then there's an eye line, I think, for the microphone. I can't remember what it's called. <clears throat> but an IXZ, I think uh, I think certainly it's, it's made a difference for me. Uh, you can use it with your iPhone, your iPad, uh, iPod. <clears throat> and I think you can get them... Uh, I don't use Android, I've got to be honest. I'm a bit of a snob like that. But I think, um, I think you'll find that... Um, the Android headphone sockets are the same, so the, 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 the concept is the same. The downside, I will say, with the iXZ and the iRig and any other device that works 
through the headphone socket as opposed to going through the connector at the bottom. Um, it does have an, an inherent flaw, uh, but it's not with the device itself, it's just with the fact that this is designed to be a telephone. Um, the, the, the socket on here, the, the, the way that works um, is that obviously your voice is being communicated one way and the incoming sound is being communicated the other way. Great. But to, to make that conversation, uh, to make using a headset feel comfortable, these sockets are designed on all phones <coughs> to have a little bit of bleed between those two communications. So, so basically you, you can hear a little bit of your own voice in your own head um, and obviously they can hear both sides that's necessary for you to hear both sides of the conversation and not to feel like you're talking with hands over your ears. Um, that instantly presents a problem with this because what it effectively means is that um, your, your input sound and output sound are being bled together which means you're, you're, when, when you've recorded your first track and you start going back to your second, your second track is being bled into the device and then back through. Um, the only way you can get around that really is to keep the level down, keep the input level high, uh, and then turn down in your headphones, which is a bit of a bummer. You want it nice and loud, especially if you're using distortion and whatnot. You, you, you want you want it as loud as possible so you can feel like you're performing a little. Um, but it is a problem, and I've, I've discovered that this is a problem not so much with MTSR uh, because I've been using that for just acoustic stuff and you know vocals. When you get into maybe using an iPad or if you're using GarageBand, uh, Amplitude, any of these. Um, any of these apps which have got um, uh, distortion effects, uh, amp effects, they're amplifying that signal. Um, and there's not really a way around that. You're, anyone who's used Amplitude and tried using it through that socket will know you get to certain settings, you get to certain amp heads, and all of a sudden it's screeching with feedback. And instinctively you're sort of looking around, what have I got to turn down? But there is no feedback. There's no speaker cabinet here for real. There's nothing you can sort of turn away from. You can unplug the guitar, it will carry on making that same screeching noise, it won't have any effect whatsoever and it's because it's this output that's being bled back in that's feeding back, it's not your guitar, it's not the amp, it's not the amp head. Um, so that is the drawback and I think if you are looking at doing recording on a long term basis, if you're looking to take it slightly more seriously, which obviously I have been, you need to look at getting a device that goes into the bottom socket there, something USB driven, something that has clean signals in each direction. But I'll talk about that another time. Um, the most important thing is if you're looking for scratch ideas, if you're looking not to do anything too elaborate and you just want to get stuff down, or if you want to get recordings in and then affect them after the fact. So you can get the guitar track in, trim it all down in, in GarageBand or whatever you're using, um, and then apply some effects to it, put it through some uh, virtual amps or virtual distortion pedals. If you want to do it that way around, you could probably work with it, and I have. I've done a couple of tracks that way where I've recorded just a clean signal in, um, keep the volume down so you don't get your click track or your, your other tracks coming back in, so you get a clean track through your electric guitar. Um, and then and then apply the effects afterwards. I think I've probably talked too much for the time being, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm All Things Bob, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the like button, tell, tell all your friends about me. Thank you. Bye.